Uh, Chairman Van Hall, uh, thank you, Ranking Member uh, Hyde-Smith, for holding this hearing. And uh, I want to thank you, Inspector General Whitcomb, and we have a, a panel of other witnesses to follow you. Um, I am gravely concerned about the service delivery standards of the U.S. Postal Service and the intended significant uh, realignment of the Postal Service that you were just describing. Um, so let's start by looking backwards and then by, by looking forwards. Um, Mail delays have been one of the top issues that have caused Delawareans to call me in my office, to email, to text, to write. And often those letters are delayed in getting to my office. I'm from a small state of about 900,000 people. I've gotten 3,500 messages in the last year, 3,500 messages in the last year complaining about delays in postal delivery. I've gotten complaints from veterans who weren't getting their medications in the mail. I've gotten complaints from small businesses that weren't getting uh, payment checks uh, into them or weren't able to get services out. I've gotten complaints from just families who didn't get birthday cards from grandma to their grandchild or notices about things that they needed to get to on time. So um, I'm sure you've heard that. I suspect every single member of Congress has heard that, but I wanna dig in um, just a little bit if we can. Um, I was proud to vote for the president's three Board of Governors uh, nominees, and I am hopeful they can have a real impact on uh, restoring service delivery standards, and I think we are not done uh, making changes uh, to the leadership of the Postal Service. I've signed seven letters about the impact uh, of Postal Service uh, delivery uh, on uh, farmers, on small business owners, on everyday individuals in Delaware. Um, five of them have been responded to. Uh, two of them so far have not. Um, I'd be interested um, in your view on exactly why delays have continued so long after the holiday season. I understand the pandemic contributed to some, the holiday season contributed to some, the election contributed to some, but some of them are the inevitable outcome of a poorly executed series of strategic changes. You were just testifying that some of the basic policy changes were never conveyed in writing to a very large and distributed nationwide organization. What do you think are the critical reasons my state and so many others uh, have suffered through needless and long delivery delays? It's a, a complicated network, and I, I agree with you. Change at the Postal Service is, is very difficult to implement well. We've looked at, um, at the changes that were there last year. We've looked at changes that were uh, implemented back in, in 2015 to look to see what um, uh, service impacts were there. Um, what, what we saw, and probably the most critical thing that, that um, we saw in that report, and uh, Chairman Van Hollen mentioned earlier, um, was that no service impact analysis was done prior to the initiation of some of the changes. And that was a key recommendation that we made in that report, is prior to service changes, service impact prior to changes in the network, service really needs to be analyzed to see what the impacts of those changes would be. So that's part of it. Um, in fairness to the Postal Service, um, employee availability continues to be an issue in many sites. And as employees are, are, are still on leave, are still dealing with the challenges of COVID, uh, it's it's a difficult situation for the Postal Service. When the Postal Service has been one of those places that have been generally resilient when a natural disaster occurs. They can usually come in and pretty recover pretty quickly in the event of a natural disaster that's localized. Uh, COVID really hit them in all the weak spots. Um, because it was national, they couldn't move employees from one location to another to deal with issues. They didn't have the employee bench strength. It's, it's a very brute force kind of organization and it relies on its employees. And when those employees aren't there, it's very hard to recover in certain locations because uh, from service issues. It also, I think, is, is certain plants in certain locations, as I said earlier, that have been troubled for long periods of time really, really struggled in, in the past year. One particular complaint I just got last weekend uh, was from the Cape Gazette, a local newspaper in Sussex County, Delaware, um, that delivers by mail um, their copies of their regular periodical. Um, and they've noticed over the last year just dramatic delays um, in handling. And they've gotten complaints. Uh, they've gone and visited different postal handling facilities, and they've been struck at the extent to which, because it is technically second-class mail, although newspapers have been a critical part of our country since its founding, um, they're just not getting the same attention. Have you heard similar complaints about newspapers and how they're handled in the mail? 
We haven't heard specifically about newspapers. Um, we've heard more generally about just mail in general and challenges just getting through some of the processing plants. And some of the plants have recovered better than others, but some of the plants are, are still very challenged. I was really struck in your written testimony, and I'm, I'm just gonna quote back to you for a minute, um, that there are significant structural reforms planned. Um, changes that you describe as complex and difficult you said there's a risk implementation could result in regional or widespread service issues, more service issues, um, and that historically when the Postal Service implements network changes, it has not always been able to improve service or realize projected cost savings. You ask for 17 million more in order to stay on top of and ahead of these changes, and I hope we'll work together to deliver those resources to the IG. These sound like um, significant uh, realignments, building $9 billion worth of new equipment, new facilities, realigning mail volume from air to surface transportation, and a dramatic change in footprints uh, and where and how and when things are handled. You mentioned a moment ago that no service delivery impact analysis was done before the current Postmaster General implemented uh, haphazard policy changes last year. Would it be your advice that there has to be service delivery impact analysis done before these major restructurings are undertaken? Yes, yes. Um, let me just ask in close, what other plans do you have um, for overseeing these ambitious reform plans that the Postal Service has underway as a result of their 10-year plan? Yeah, um, great question. We, we have, um, are just launching our first look into the 10-year plan, and uh, some of the things that we're looking at is how they're gonna measure success of the plan, what are some of the dependencies on the different parts of the plan that are dependent on each other, what service impact issues could result in the, um, as they start implementing some of these changes. Um, we're also uh, looking at, at things like um, do they have um, triggers or, or trip wires. If they start implementing it and something goes wrong that they can roll back or pull back and what are those and how are those established, things like that because those I think are very important as they go in. One last thing that we'll be looking at is, is the assumptions that they built the plan on, um, kind of what, what assumptions were there and, and if those change moving forward, how might the plan change? Well, I appreciate uh, your dedication and work and uh, the role that the IG plays. Um, there's an awful lot of Delawareans who are very angry and very upset about service delivery changes in the Postal Service, and I'm going to do my level best working with the chair and ranking member to make sure that um, the resources are there so that we have real-time insights into how they are or are not making positive improvements on delivery standards. Thank you, Ms. Whitcomb. I'll turn it over to Senator Bozeman. Thank you.